In an eight-page letter, the White House declared it will halt all cooperation with what it terms the illegitimate impeachment probe by House Democrats, sharpening the constitutional clash between the U.S. President and the Congress. Joining us to talk about the one headline that has engulfed the American political scene is Eddie Glaude. He is the James S. McDonnell Distinguished University Professor at Princeton University. Professor Glaude is also a columnist for Time Magazine and a regular on Democracy Now!, MSNBC's Morning Joe and The Eleventh Hour Show. Professor, beyond the he said, she said and the sense of deja vu that you might sense when you see the contents of that letter, what's going on? Where are we now? Well, I think there are a couple of things happening. I think uh, on uh, what's clear is that we're, we're on the cusp of a constitutional crisis in the United States. Uh, there has been ongoing criticism of the expansion of executive power. Uh, that, that criticism uh, was levied during the Obama years and, and the Bush years and even the Clinton years, that, that the executive branch was overreaching its constitutional mandate. Um, and so with the President of the United States engaging in alleged criminal behavior, or at least in, in behavior that would rise to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors, uh, it, it triggers the constitutional oversight, you know, the, over, the constitutional responsibility of the House of Representatives in terms of its oversight. And so the fact that uh, Donald Trump now uh, and, 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 and the administration is refusing to hand over documents, is refusing to participate in the impeachment inquiry, brings all of this to, the, to a head. That's one problem is that we have a constitutional problem where a certain understanding of executive power uh, is being uh, exercised and being challenged. And we have to figure out how that's going to play itself out. Another problem is Donald Trump himself. Uh, he has broken every standing norm of, of an American president. Uh, and he's done so in the name of what many people see as a kind of populist uprising where he's exploited the kind of anxieties, economic and cultural anxieties of white America. And he's done so with the level of, of disregard uh, for basic norms and principles of American democracy that he threatens just by his behavior alone to change the very nature of the presidency, change the very nature of the presidency. Um, and, and, and this leads us to the third problem. So you have the, the constitutional issue of executive branch and, and, and the House of Representatives and the Congress. You have the issue of Donald Trump himself. And then you have uh, uh, those uh, Republicans and, and those Americans of 30 percent, 39 percent who support him no matter what. Uh, these are the folks who in some significant way are how can I put this? They are content to watch the carnage, right? The deconstruction of the administrative state, the challenge to the so-called deep state. They are content in some ways um, uh, to witness what I take to be the dismantling of American democratic life. Uh, and so it's those three elements at the level of institutions, at the level of the individual actor, and at the level of the collective uh, that we're facing a problem today in the United it's a significant problem. Professor, Trump's anti-impeachment offensive, it's a mix of legal, political, and personal attacks. And it's usually been some combination of these uh, right from 2016. So nearly three years into this presidency, lawmakers on the other side are still trying, trying to figure out how to respond. Uh, and that uh, speaks to your the third point that you made. Are they getting any closer, any success? Um, are they making any dent? Well, in some ways, I mean, in some ways, Trump is is the gift that keeps giving. You know, with the stuff that you know, the comments in public, uh, what he said about Ukraine, what he said about China, uh, the work that he's, uh, the work that his campaign is trying to do in order to uh, tar uh, Joe Biden with uh, corruption, uh, the height of hypocrisy and mendacity. Uh, it, you know, uh, when you think about it in terms of Trump's own life. Uh, and his own family. Um, I think one of the interesting things about our moment is that those of us who are committed to process and those conservatives who are committed to process and institutions actually play into Donald Trump's hands. He actually presumes or presupposes that we're going to behave right in accordance to standing norms and processes. And because we're beholden 
to those processes and more. He gets to act out because he's not. And then when, if we decide to act differently, then he could then say, see, you're not acting according to norms and processes. So in some ways, the strategy, at least Trump's strategy as I see it, presupposes our faith in process as he undermines.